Hey everyone, welcome to this very special edition of the Behavioral Observations Podcast. In session 130, I'm joined by Drs. Jennifer Harris and Greg Elsky to talk about supporting the California Association for Behavior Analysis. Uh, you, you'd be forgiven if you uh, live in a different part of the country and you weren't a paying attention to what was going on with Calab last year for not n knowing that they uh, they suffered a massive, massive financial loss. They had to cancel their conference at the, literally as people were walking in, as attendees were walking into the venue last spring. This occurred in the infancy of the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, the the impact of this cancellation was was nothing short of staggering. And it's really putting in jeopardy the ability of Calaba to quite literally exist. So it's with that in mind, I want to draw your attention to the fundraising campaign that they have going right now. You can find links to that in the show notes of today's episode. Uh, and uh, they have a about a half a million dollar hole they're trying to fill. Now, you might be wondering, hey, I don't live in California. What you know? What's in this for me? And, uh, you know, I, I've shared my thoughts about this uh, uh, in, on LinkedIn uh, and on Facebook. And, you know, it, it basically comes down to this. I think having a strong Cal ABBA is good for the practice of behavior analysis writ large. I think other states pay attention to what larger states do. And uh, so we want to have a strong representation of behavior analysis in our most populous state. And again, I think that's not only good for Californians who... Um, who are behavior analysts, Californians who receive behavior analyst services, but for the rest of us who are practicing behavior analysts. In other words, there are, there are downstream positive consequences to having a strong functional Cal ABBA. So we, we talk about all that stuff and more and uh, go behind the scenes, like I said, to uh, you know what it was like at the time. Uh, and again, highlight some of the things that they're doing to uh, to raise funds to uh, you know recover from this you know this devastating event, so uh, it's a it's an it's an interesting story. It's a fun story, and I, I honestly hope this story has a happy ending. Uh, it's uncertain right now, to be quite honest. Uh, so if you do have the wherewithal to contribute, uh, go to behavioralobservations.com, Check out session one hundred and thirty. You'll find the links there to uh, contribute. So uh, I know the COVID-19 pandemic has hit many people in the wallet. And so I would understand if you don't have the, the funds to do so. But if you do, again, please consider donating to Calaba. Uh, and if you want to hear more about it, I, I think this is a f an interesting conversation uh, for a variety of reasons. So without any further delay, let's get to this conversation about Calaba with Doctors Elsky and Harris. Welcome to the Behavioral Observations Podcast, stimulating talk for today's behavior analysts. Now, here's your host, Matt Sicoria. Doctors Greg Elsky and Jennifer Harris, thanks for joining me today on the Behavioral Observations Podcast on this very special. We love Cal Abba episode of the Behavioral Observations Podcast. Thanks again for joining me today. How are you guys doing? Good. Thanks so much for having us on, Matt. We're doing great and really appreciate you having us. Well, it's it's my pleasure. You know, I, I was uh, uh, my uh, uh, co-author, uh, Lisa Britton, uh, reached out to me, uh, I don't know, about a month ago, a month or two ago, and she's gave me kind of just a, a thumbnail sketch on, you know, some of the uh, challenges that Cal Calab has had, and we'll give you guys a chance to kind of get into that in more detail in just a moment. Uh, but uh, it's one of those things, you know, way over here, three time zones away, I had no idea about. Uh, and so she she uh, connected us so we could have this chat here. So um, I want to get into what we're talking about this with this whole kind of uh, we, we love Calaba uh, or save Calaba campaign. Um, and, but before we get into that, why don't you guys just briefly introduce yourselves, tell us a little bit about what you do, where you do it, and things like that, and, and your connection to Calaba. Uh, sure. Um, so my name is Dr. Greg Elsky. I am the CEO of an agency that provides behavioral services for primarily children with autism and other developmental disabilities called Behavioral Learning Network. And I am also the current president for California Association for Behavior Analysis. 
And I'm Dr. Jennifer Harris. And uh, like Greg, I also have an agency that's dedicated to serving kids with autism and their families um, called First Steps for Kids. And uh, I also am the co-founder of the USC master's program with Dr. Jonathan Tarbox. Um, and I teach uh, both graduate and undergraduate classes there as well. And I'm the president elect of Cal Abba. All right. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. So I want to start just by kind of uh, t- presenting my uh, point of view. Of, I remember, uh, you know, as as uh, or at least my recollection of what happened uh, last uh, February or March, I think it was. Uh, I'm sure you guys have the the date, the exact date, permanently you know, <laughs> emblazoned in your in your memories. But uh, anyway, just from my little perspective here in uh, in New Hampshire, I remember uh, I was just on Facebook one afternoon. I was just kind of like, you know, looking through some of the ABA groups as I'm, you know as I do sometimes. And everyone's like, yeah, we're on our way to Calaba. You know, people are posting pictures of themselves in the plane and stuff like that. Uh, so um, obviously Calaba didn't happen. So I want to give you guys, uh, you know, we're going to get into like the devastating financial consequences of that cancellation. But I want I want to get into like the anatomy of the, the cancellation itself. Uh, you guys had some interesting anecdotes that uh, you shared when we had this, you know, kind of a pre-interview conversation last week. Um, so, so tell us what it was like as, you know, kind of, um, some of the people, you know, some of, as some of the Cal ABBA officers, you know, senior up in the organization, having to make this difficult decision in the midst of everyone kind of coming into the, you know, the, the venue and things like that. So, uh, why don't you start us off there, please? Sure. Um, and maybe just to start a little bit about Cal ABBA and the conference itself. Um, Cal ABBA is a 501c6 nonprofit organization that's, primarily run by volunteer board. So none of us are paid. Uh, This is a myth that sometimes goes around. Um, But so all of us are volunteers that have day jobs. Um, Calaba puts on the second largest um, conference of its kind in behavior analysis worldwide. We're the largest state association in the country. Um, Our conference, we generally expect a little bit north of about 3,000 people to attend um, so it's a it's a pretty large event, um, particularly for for our little field here in um, behavior analysis. And that number is increasing every year. So every year it gets bigger, and every year, um, you know, it's 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 a a larger uh, labor of love. How many yeah. days is the event typically? The event is usually about three days, I think. Jen, am I right about that? Yeah, including workshops. And, um, you know, we also do a, uh, which we'll talk more uh, later about, but we do a science retreat as well uh, during the conference. And so that tacks on another day as well for um, for our academic folks. Mm-hmm. I see. So so I, I gave like perhaps uh, a, an overgeneralized thumbnail sketch. So take us back to fill us in with some of the dates and what, what were, what were the challenges that you guys were facing as it relates to the, at at that point, the just early stages of the COVID-19 pandemic and how that related to uh, this, this virtual world that we're living in now. But Mm -hmm. at that point in time, the cancellation of of, of events that had scheduled to be taken, that that were scheduled to be uh, completed in a face-to-face format. Yeah. So at that time, Looking back, we knew nothing. We really knew nothing about COVID. There was very little information, and um, and I don't know if people were taking it very seriously. And in California, Santa Clara, which is up in Northern California, um, was sort of the ground zero for COVID in California at that time. And I think there were like three cases. And heading into the conference, um, we were sort of getting information as it was coming. And um, as I'm sure everybody in the world knows, information was fast and furious and what, what happened today might be totally different tomorrow. And so for the weeks leading up to the conference, there were the discussions got it within, um, within the board, the discussions got more and more intense on, should we do this? Should we not do this? Um, We, you know, as a board, we're very concerned about our membership as well as the community that we all tend to serve and some of the conversations were, gosh, if somebody were to get COVID and then bring it back to somebody with a disability, we would just be devastated. And you know, what we know now about COVID, had we had that conference, it would have been, I mean, really a vector that would have accelerated the um, COVID within California and, and actually probably nationwide, because as you mentioned, we had people flying from all over the, the country and really the world coming in. So 
Um, so it, it could have been really bad. So leading up, there were multiple meetings that were pretty heated um, within our board talking about daily. Yeah. Should we cancel? Should we not cancel? It, it almost came to votes and came to votes. Um, and ultimately, as a board, we made the decision that we are going to follow what the government tells us, the state, local, the CDC, the state and local guidelines. And at that time, what the guidelines said was, was, you're okay. And so we decided if, as long as the government says you're okay, you're okay. Yeah, I and so um, the Department of Public Health on speed dial. I mean, we were, <laughs> you know, every day, hello, it's me again calling from Calaba. And we were, we were really connected with the Department of Public Health in, Cal- in Santa Clara. And they were telling us daily, proceed, proceed, proceed. So we did. Yeah, and, and I, I think we had, we had even met like the day before the conference to say, we're doing this. And um, and I remember um, I had arrived at the hotel and I was talking with Matt McAleer, who's our executive director. And, uh, and we actually physically high-fived each other because we couldn't believe we actually made it. And it was literally seconds after that I got a tap on the shoulder from our board consultant, um, Sarah Troutman, who said, we need to talk in private right now. And uh, she pulled us into a side room where there was a television and on the television was a press conference from the Santa Clara Department of Health, where they said all large gatherings must be uh, canceled or postponed. And so, which was just- Meanwhile, people are arriving, they're landing, they're arriving, they're bringing their suitcases in, they got their t-shirts on, they're- Yeah, they're drinking at the bar, they're having a party, right? Like the whole thing. And, And we were like, oh my gosh, this is happening. So we immediately needed to call an emergency board meeting. Um, and I can remember how heavy that room was in that moment um, where we had to um, go to vote and, and uh, somebody made a motion to cancel the 2020 conference and the air just got sucked out of the room in that moment. Did you ever have any follow-up with the Department of Health? I mean, it sounds like, you know, it's one of those things. It's like, you're fine, you're fine, you're fine, you're fine, you're fine. And then... Uh, and, until you're not, um, I, I'm just curious, you know, uh, what, 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 if there was any hedging on their parts, uh, you know, leading up to that or was, you know, I mean, it's just, it just sounds like I mean, a, a, a light switch was flipped or there was step function change or something like that. I mean, once they made the call, they were steadfast. It was non-negotiable. This is what's happening. This is the recommendation. Um, and it, there wasn't a lot of, um, you know, maybe if, you know, <laughs> any right, type right. of outs, it was, this is, this is what's been decided. This is what's mandated. Go. So, and um, I don't think there, and to your question, I don't think there were any warning signs at all, Matt. I think it no, was, uh, everything uh, was, you're okay. You're okay. You're okay. You're not okay. I was right. personally one calling them every day. So yeah, they were very much, it's fine. You know, we're, we're okay. You're good to go. And then it just wasn't. <laughs> wow. Wow. That must've been yeah. such a shock. Um, tell me about some of the interactions you have with the arriving conference attendees or would be a conference attendees, I should say. Uh, any, so, any, anything memorable that you can share? Oh yeah. So um, after the, the decision was made to cancel, we had to sort of very quickly, the board had to go out and kind of um, figure out how to communicate to the membership that the conference had canceled, as we had just mentioned, a lot of people were already there. Many people were arriving. And so for me, I, my job was to stand at the door. And as people were walking in the door to inform that the, that the conference was canceled, then they should go home. And, um, and I remember talking to people and they're like, yeah, that's real funny, Greg. Ha ha ha. And I'm like, no, I'm not kidding. And then they would go get a second opinion <laughs> because they didn't believe me. And I um, speak to your manager. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Definitely. And calling folks that were at the airport about to take off saying, don't get on the plane, you know, and it's just, it was just devastating. People were truly heartbroken. um, And angry. And it was just kind of this odd pause and, and this kind of collective, wow, what does this mean, you know, going forward for California, for the world, for, you know, what, what is the significance of this? Um, And, you know, I think, I think, generally it it just it was kind of the catalyst of what we've seen at least in California for all of our practices just the massive um 
you know, shutdown of everything. Um, and this was Calaba's conference kind of was, you know, the first thing that happened for our community in California. And then it's just kind of unraveled. So I see. Um, it was, it was devastating. I mean, we're, we're making light of, you know, the, the, just the, un, the insurmountableness of, of that day, but it was, it was simultaneously shocking and devastating all at once. What, what did you guys do that night? You know, I'm just, it was, there's some, <laughs> or, or can you, <laughs> Alcohol involved. Yeah, yeah. So I was going to, you know, like, I think that, I'm just trying to wonder what, what the room must have been like, you know, uh, after, after, you know, especially Greg, if you had the unfortunate job of, of just being the, the bearer of bad news and, you know, uh, had, yeah, you probably had to deliver that message, you know, dozens, if not more times. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, you know, again, I don't want to, you know, kind of, uh, overly dwell on this, you know, this, you know, couple of hours span of time, but it's just something that I think has been unprecedented, uh, you know, at least in, in, in the, you know, kind of hit field of ABA perhaps. Um, so I'm just trying to like w- want to get uh, as, as close to that as possible, just given the uniqueness of that s- scenario. Um, how, how did the, I, I'm sure there must've been a range of responses from the attendees in terms of, I, I, and you said people, you know, varied from angry to, to heartbroken and things like that. Uh, what also did that mean for, uh, you know, I know there's so much that goes into planning a conference or at least I understand that's the case because I, you know, <laughs> I haven't had the uh, uh, the responsibility of pulling off an event that that large. Um, but I know there's a lot of costs involved and in things like that leading up to it. Um, can you guys take a minute and talk about, you know, what goes out, what goes in finance in terms of financial commitments are concerned uh, to to pulling off an event of this size? What do you guys need to put up up front and what well, you know uh, and try yeah. to talk about, you know, perhaps what was lost in, in, in this process and things like that. Yeah. Can, well, one thing that I, before we even get into the, the finances of this, which were significant and devastating, the time, as I mentioned, we are a volunteer board and our conference chair at that time is Dr. Rachel Taylor. And just to let you know, this is a full year of planning that goes into putting on the, a conference of this size. This is not a, Hey, we'll make a couple phone calls. It takes a full year of planning. And so Rachel as an unpaid volunteer board member, spent a year of her life um, along with lots of other, her conference committee. And I do want to take a moment just to shout out the Calabo board of directors who are just such a remarkable group of people who are so committed to this organization and to advancing the science and practice of behavior analysis. So um, before we, so just, uh, such a tremendous amount of manpower and time goes into this first. Second, it, about a million dollars was a, is what it takes to put on a conference of this size. So that includes the costs for uh, reserving hotel blocks that we now have to pay back that didn't get used. Uh, the cost of using the convention center that's attached to the hotel. The cost of, um, and this is something that even I was surprised by the, the expense is $100,000 in an online platform to support this event. Um, there's $40,000 in furniture rentals, $15,000 in audio visual. So, I mean, taken together, you know, I, I think people don't recognize the expense that goes into this and it's not going into my pocket. I'll tell you that, yeah. right. right. It's going, this is just to put on this right. show. And, and those, those expenses are driven by the sheer size of, of, of the community that we bring together. And so it's not like we're, you know, putting on like an Academy Award event. It's very, it's done very fiscally, um, it's very fiscally responsible in the way we plan it. Um, You know, we don't have jugglers outside and (laughs) bells and whistles and fireworks. It's all just driven by what our community needs and wants um, from, from a conference. And, and those costs are, are upfront. So um, it's heavily front loaded and the previous year's conference is what generates those funds to pay for the next, the subsequent conference. Um, and so, you know, we, we had already spent what, what we needed. Um, and, and then by canceling, um, that's when, you know, we just were ravaged by, by this whole thing. Yeah, and I, I think when it happened, we didn't know. Sorry, we, we were not even prepared for what that was going to look like. I think we were just dealing with the shock of this and kind of going, well, what does this mean? What does this mean for, for the world, right? When right. this happens, we're like, is, you know, we had no idea of what was coming. 
Um, yeah. And so, yeah. And that was our headspace initially as well. Wow, this is, this is scary. That was the first kind of reaction. And then, you know, as the night proceeded and the weeks proceeded, then it was, oh my God, we have to unravel this now and, and make, you know, do right by our members, which was a, a really, um, our board was unanimous in our, in our decision to refund all the, all the, um, uh, funds that people put into paying for their conference registration. So we immediately refunded all that, but that was, you know, 400 grand. Um, you know, so that was significant. And, and we really, you know, we decided that was a deliberate decision that no matter what happens, we've got to do right by our members who are now also facing this catastrophic financial ruin that's coming with COVID. So that was like, you know, decision number one, but it had implications, you know, that, that, that had a lot to do with what, where we are today. So um, it was deliberate. I'd do it again, but um, it, it is definitely driving kind of the, the, the dire state of things and why we, why we are initiating this campaign now. I see. And I know, uh, I think there were some other large conferences that were able to recruit some costs through uh, uh, insurance and things like that. That was not the case with Calaba, as I understand, correct? No, yeah. we've, we've, uh, we've tried to push on. There's, um, we've learned more about the law than we thought we were going to learn through this process, but there's <laughs> something called uh, force majeure. Force majeure, which, yeah. Right, which is basically cancellations due to acts of God, right? right. Which this certainly seemed to qualify um, and uh, so far, our efforts to utilize force majeure have been unsuccessful because of the timing. They said, well, it was about a day too early to cancel. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, man. That's, uh, well. Also, guess- to, that, to that point, too, we haven't been eligible for any of the SBA loans, for any loans at all because of the 501c6 status. So, you know, the really, we, we you know, we didn't do this kind of willy nilly, let's raise some money. We've tried every possible avenue. Um, to help us recover without having to go to our membership. And, and here we are. <laughs> yeah. and, and by the way, um, just to let you know also like how, how crazy this whole thing was, was the convention center that was being utilized for symposia and for our, our vendors and so on short, like a week after the cancellation was converted into a makeshift hospital because they didn't have enough beds at the hospitals. Um, so that's what we were dealing with. Wow. That's how we- and still have not that's right. <laughs> received any of that. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's, I guess that's paying it forward in a, in a yeah. you know, but not in the way in which you, one probably intends to do so. So, yeah. um, all right, so we want to talk about how Calaba can get back on track here, right? And you guys have this, uh, uh, this fundraising campaign that, that's going on right now and it's cul- culminating, uh, I believe, in the uh, Calaba Has Talent uh, show that's coming up. I want to. I want to hear a lot about that. Um, but I also want to give some folks some context about what Calaba does uh, before we ask people to consider supporting the cause. Um, because one of the things that uh, you know o- occurred to me is that you know with with a membership uh, and, and a community as large as Calaba is, you know it's it. Well, let me back up a few steps. You know, you know, again, I'm I'm three time zones away on the other side of the country. You know, this part of me, you know, could that, that could you could say something like, well, you know, that really is terrible for Calaba, but uh, you know, I've got my own bills to pay, yada yada yada. Uh, but one of the things I think is important to think about is that uh, the work that Calaba does uh, very likely has some downstream benefits for uh, you know the practice as a whole. Uh, and, and certainly the practice in the state of, you know, of, of the size like California, uh, you know, could have some, uh, you know, other states might look to California, see what they do and things like that. So it's, you know, I guess in, from my point of view, taking a very long perspective view of things that, uh, you, know, um, w- you know, kind of what's good for Calaba is good for behavior analysis. So having said all that, I want you guys to talk about some of the things that Calaba does to support the practice of behavior analysis so listeners in other parts of the country and the world uh, can get a better idea of the type of work that Calaba does. Um, sure. So Calaba's mission is to advance, promote, and protect the science and practice of behavior analysis and being one of the more mature organ state associations in the nation, Calaba being about a 40 year old organization um, and one of the larger ones, we have, we've had some advantages that we've been able to 
um, try to disseminate um, across the nation. So kind of the, so far, largely, and I don't want to take all credit because there are uh, lots of state associations doing amazing work, um, but we have been leaders in this in this space um, in a lot of ways. Um, we put on, as I mentioned, the largest conference um, nationwide, state association conference nationwide. People from all over the world come to both present and attend um, and learn and network and have fun and do all of those things. Um, we put on, Calaba sponsors um, an annual science retreat. Um, that's goal is to get the academic, uh, the university faculty and so on, uh, researchers together to um, put together ideas and, and uh, how to execute um, and advance the growth within the field. Um, and some of, you know, California has been um, ground zero for some of the most groundbreaking work um, in behavior analysis in, in the world. Not, you know, again, not trying to take anything away from other folks outside of California, but, um, but a lot of um, exceptional um, research has been generated and disseminated out of California. Um, we also organized a group of state, initially a group of state associations, and we had, I think, 23 state associations attend um, an initial meeting to really just to discuss how, um, how to grow a state association. Again, sort of being some of the more senior um, one of the more senior state associations in the in the space, we were able to um, network and, and provide um, information that will help some of the other associations not maybe not have to go through some of the growing pains that we had to go through and to, to really grow the field. Um, Jen, do you want to add on to that? Yeah, I mean, I, I think generally, you know, as Greg said, just using um, using our numbers and our long history, you know, going back to Gene Howard and 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 all these amazing folks that have come before. Um, and have really taken this organization from an itty bitty organization to a large organization with, you know, we've got a, a executive director who is literally tremendous and has had an enormous effect on, um, on our association's efforts within California and then across, across the country um, without a doubt. So as Greg said, you know, we, we focus on advancing, promoting, protecting, and um, I, I have to just give a shout out to Matt MacLear in terms of his just um, foresight and his ability to kind of guide our board and um, and our community through town hall meetings. Um, we did a lobby day where we invited our membership to participate, um, to work and, you know, to go and visit all the various um, legislature legislators in Sacramento, which was a tremendous learning experience and it enabled us to kind of get um, behavior analysts named into state law in various ways. Um, Matt and both Jane Howard were integral in terms of getting SB 946, which was our, our insurance mandate passed um, in California. And I think they just, um, you know, with, with the, our past leadership and our current board, the, the intent has never been just look at our own little backyard. You know, we've always wanted to look um, and see how we can help folks across the country um, who are starting up behavior analytic practices um, and, and guide our, our field forward in a way that really emphasizes quality intervention, protecting the practice, making sure that as a field, our reputation is just spot on and that we're all practicing with excellence so that our consumers benefit. Um, to that end, Sarah Troutman and Matt put on um, the, um, the boot camps across the country where the intent was to just really help new business owners do it right and not screw up and to make sure that, that um, the services that our colleagues are providing are, are, are the best they can be and are done with integrity and, you know, following our ethics and really um, sharing the wealth of knowledge um, that has come from those that have come before across the country. So I think, um, you know, just personally, I've served on the board for, I think, seven years now. Um, it's been remarkable to see, you know, every board that's changed, you know, every president that's come in, all the leadership, just the um, the outreach that that's there and that the, the commitment to um, making sure that we do right by by everybody in the field, um, not just not just those sitting in the room. And so um, we've got big plans for the future. And we really um, we want to have a future, and I and I think that um, it's important for not just those in California to take an interest in this cause, but everybody, because um, 
we've taken an interest um, for for decades. In, sure, in sure. So, so Jennifer, just to kind of elaborate on something, I think you. Um, yeah kind of hinted at there. Uh, tell me if I've got this right or not. You said well, there might be a future now. Th- th- so I don't, I don't want to over-dramatize this situation, but the uh, Calava as a going concern, uh, if you will, uh, yeah. it, its existence perhaps is at stake here, right? If, if it doesn't kind of figure out a way to, to fill this financial hole. It, do I have that correct? Absolutely. Yeah. We're in trouble. Yeah. All right. All right. So, We're so raise, you know, half a million dollars to stay operational. And when we say operational, that's like things cut drastically. So we had an office, the office is gone. Um, we, you know, we had some consultants that helped with us. Those are all those, those people are, you know, on hold. Um, we, you know, our board is now online. Um, we, we've cut and slashed and burned every possible cost we can. Um, we only have two, we only have two paid employees, uh, which are both part-time and, um, our executive director took a 50% pay cut. So we run, we run pretty lean and mean as it is. And yeah. yeah and then that even that was cut. So we've right. cut everywhere that, that can be cut. Um, and, and there's, and again, we don't, our expenses are not very high. The money that we're looking to raise is to pay the debts that exactly. were accru- that were accrued from the, the devastating effects of canceling, canceling this conference. So let's get into that. Uh, so what what is uh, what, what's what's the hole? What's what have you? How I, I saw something uh, whether it was on uh, Twitter or Facebook. I can't remember where the other day saying that you guys are starting to make some headway. Uh, yeah. There's still uh, a ways to go. Uh, can you kind of tell us with uh, a little bit more detail in terms of uh, you know what your goals are and what do you have thus far? Sure. Um, our goal is to raise a half million dollars. It's a big ask in about in about three weeks time. Um, and that's again, not because we're, you know, we need raises or anything like that. This is just, as Jen said, to stay operational, um, in terms of where we're at at present, Jen, do you have the current numbers pulled up? Uh, as of the last time I checked, it was about 178 grand, um, that we've raised so far, which is absolutely phenomenal. And, you know, the, the gratitude that I think our entire board and our community feels is, is real, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but we're not there yet. And, and so, you know, and we've done the math and we thought, well, if we just have our Cal, our Calaba members all contribute $150 each, we'd be okay. And we were not so naive to, to think that that's doable for everybody. Um, but we are hoping that those who have the means can, can really chip in and, and, um, and support those that maybe can make a smaller donation. Um, but it really is, it really is um, needed and necessary if we want to keep having um, this organization running. Right. And as you're saying that, I'm, uh, I am I should have been pointing out throughout this conversation that you go to calaba.org and there's a, there's a big red button that says save Calaba and it's got all the details there about different ways to give and things like that. There's also some corporate sponsorships, it looks like as well. Yeah. So if you're an agency uh, and uh, you want to contribute to that, there are opportunities to do that as well. Uh, yeah, and to that point, you know, we've got lots of fun things that we can give away to, for those that are willing to sponsor us. So, you know, we've got for folks that are, you know, interested in competing in our, in our Calaba's Got Talent, you can get a lifetime membership of Calaba. You can have a lifetime of Calaba. <laughs> so, um, you know, we're trying to give back and, and encourage folks to participate and make it fun, um, in the ways that, you know, that we can give back and that's through memberships and, um, and conference attendance and CEUs and all kinds of fun stuff that assuming we, we make it through this, you know, we're happy to, we're happy to share. Great. Great. Um, so we've, uh, we've teased, we, uh, Calaba has uh, talent or tech Calaba's got talent. Yep. <laughs> uh, so tell us about this event. Uh, I'm really excited to, to hear about it. And, uh, you know, I want to know who, who signed up for it and, and uh, all great. that stuff. So, brainchild here. So I'm going to let him take it away. All right. <laughs> so um, I like the show America's Got Talent. So we were attempting to try to replicate that as best as we can. We have sponsor judges who are our platinum sponsors. And by the way, we still have one platinum sponsorship available if anybody wants to jump in there. Um, and so we are going to have our membership. We'll be submitting, um, I think it's 90 second video clips of them doing the various talents that they've got. So if you're somebody that's um, that's good at music or comedy or action sports um, or 
I don't know what magic. I don't know. Did I say that already? Um, <laughs> any, any of those things. I like magic. Um, what about a mime? That would be, yeah. I, would, be I would definitely, definitely want to see a mime. <laughs> that would go great uh, yeah. on this show. <laughs> a mime over Zoom would be, uh, you know. Right. Uh, Quiet. That, that, that would be like the 2020, you know, that that would be a pretty meta thing. <laughs> right. um, so there, so uh, anyone who's in who in the membership can submit a 90 second video uh, to us in showing off their talent. That video will um, that will then get reviewed by a committee, and the top, I think, five or ten, I think five most likely, will be um, will will be played during the live event. Um, then our sponsor judges will talk about it and attempt to influence the audience in one direction or another. And the audience is going to be able to vote live. Um, we will also have a comedian who's going to be uh, hosting the event to, you know, keep us nerdy people entertaining, hopefully. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'll talk about myself. Um, to keep things, to keep things going. And, uh, and then there will be judging and uh, the audience will vote and we'll, and there'll be winners and, uh, and we'll have all kinds of fun prizes for the winners and um, also leading up to the event. Some of our, um, I call them ABA All-Stars uh, nationwide, have, have already made some videos that we're going to be putting out as promos. And so you'll see a lot of, uh, a lot of our folks on the uh, website and social media doing some things that you may not have known that they had those talents. Um, Dr. Hank Schlinger, we just posted one who's a phenomenal talent um, doing Tom Petty. Um, so you guys will see some really cool stuff coming, even Thank leading up to the event. Yeah. What's that? Uh -huh. Yeah. Jim, Jim Carr, Carr playing the electric yeah. guitar. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I saw him online Megadeth. playing some Megadeth. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was pretty. Yeah, so that's definitely worth tuning in for, just uh, just in its own right. Are, are, are there other other uh, uh, other entries that you're uh, able to talk about, or I know you probably want to keep some close to the vest to you know <laughs> you know you don't want to give it all away, right? You know you want people to tune in. But, yeah, I can't really talk about the entries yet. <laughs> We've got a lot of string instruments going right now. <laughs> I, I bet. I, I bet. That, I can talk about what I'd like to see. I would love to see some action sports. If anybody, <laughs> skateboard, surf, wakeboard, any of those things would be cool. Magic would be cool. So if, you for, know. for the behavioral follies that we used to do, things like that, comedy acts, I think that have a, a behavior analytics spin could be, could be really a, a, a hit. <laughs> all right, very uh, cool. There's dancers, uh, so there there may be all kinds of cool stuff, so it should be fun. So if someone's interested in doing this, where, where can they uh, find out how to submit their, their clip? So everything's on the website, but it pushes to our mobile cause site, which is our, our kind of homegrown, hand-built website that um, – that folks can make donations through, they can set up crowdfunding through, and they can submit their videos through there. And the website is? App.cause.com slash <laughs> All right. You can get it through our website, which is calaba. <laughs> All right. And uh, if you guys send me the link, I'll have the link into the show notes for this episode as well. So uh, you can just go to behavioralobservations.com, look for Calaba, and uh, we can have all those... Uh, all the proper links waiting for you there. Uh, all right. Well, this is, um, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Um, uh, I, I can't wait to hear about, so hopefully, hopefully Greg, you get some of those uh, uh, action sports and other types of things to diversify the crowd, uh, you know, from, from all of the, uh, you know, the, the nerdy guitar playing types that uh, t tend to populate the field of behavior analysis. So, uh, so all right. Very cool. Uh, any last thoughts about Calaba before I let you guys go? We need you guys. Uh, Calaba has supported our community um, for the last forty-ish years. Um, we looked for we looked to you before we looked to ourselves when all of this went down, and so we're asking you now to take care of us. Yep, and by us, not the board. You know, us is you. You are us. <laughs> you know, we are all going to transition off the board, and and our membership is going to join the board. So, um, you know, this is about all behavior analysts um, practicing in California and beyond. And um, there's a lot of gratitude to those that are already stepping up. Um, it's already making a difference. You know, I think there's been a, a collective, okay, maybe it's going to be okay feeling, um, you know, in Cal within Calaba, but we need, we need more. Um, and, um, you know, we intend to do good things in the future and, and we want to make sure we have the opportunity to do those things. Yeah. All right. One last bit. We we every little bit counts. Um, you know, as Jen said, um, so our membership is about twenty eight hundred people strong, and that's just in California. If if we can get everyone to, to raise one hundred fifty dollars, and I know that's hard, but talk to your family members, your 
your friends. If a bunch of people get together and each chip in 20 bucks, every, every bit counts. Um, we're at about $170,000 raised so far, which sounds like a lot, but that's, we're not even close. So please help. It helps the science. It helps behavior analysis. It helps us all. All right. To you, Matt Sikoria, thank you. Thank you for doing this. Oh, yeah, the the pleasure's mine. Happy to help and uh, looking forward to making my own, putting my money where my mouth is and making my own (laughs) donation. So, um, (laughs) all right, folks, thanks for joining me. I wish you guys the very best of luck and uh, hopefully Calaba keeps on, uh, keeps the, uh, maintains the opportunity to keep doing awesome things. So thanks again for joining me. Appreciate you, Matt. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to the Behavioral Observations Podcast with Matt Sikoria. You can find Matt's notes on this episode at www.behavioralobservations.com. We also invite you to stay connected with us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash behavioral observations and on Twitter at Behavior Podcast.